add-on desired. Hello viewers, welcome to Adopt Solution Daily Current Affairs. I'm Lokesh Pinamunda. The session is mainly designed for aspirants preparing for banking, groups and such other competitive examinations. We cover news articles from both the Hindu and the Indian Express. Make use of this. First, we have an article dealing with the State Bank of India. It is stated that the State Bank of India's board has approved for raising $2 billion as bonds. Now, we'll see the background of State Bank of India. In the 1800s, there are banks such as Bank of Madras, Bank of Bombay and Bank of Bengal. And these three banks were amalgamated or merged in the year 1921 to form the Imperial Bank of India. Imperial Bank. And from the year 1921 till the year 1935, this bank had mainly two functions. One is the commercial function and next is the central bank functions. So, we know that the Reserve Bank of India has established only in the year 1935. So, till the establishment of Reserve Bank of India, the Imperial Bank not only worked for commercial purposes but also it had the it worked as a central bank of the country as well and only in the 1935 when rbi was established this controlling functions ceased to exist and in the year 1955 the government of india nationalized the imperial bank it nationalized the imperial bank and the government of India has brought in an act called as State Bank of India Act 1955. And after nationalizing this imperial bank, this, this imperial bank was merged or came under the State Bank of India. And also in the same year, what we witnessed is the passing of State Bank of India subsidiary banks subsidiary banks act and after the passage of this subsidiary bank of state bank of india act what we witnessed is setting up of several subsidiary banks of state bank we have seen the establishment of banks such as state bank of mysore state bank of hyderabad state bank of patiala and later on these subsidiary banks have been merged again with the parent bank and only in the 2017 we have seen five subsidiary banks being merged into the parent bank of state bank of india so this is regarding the state bank of india and it is the largest public sector bank of the country Next, we have an article dealing with INVIT. So, what does INVIT stands for? INVIT stands for Infrastructure Investment Trust. So, what is the function or objective of setting up of Infrastructure Investment Trust? So, these are similar to the mutual funds similar to mutual funds where people will will bring in some amount to invest and they would be able to get a share of certain funds so similarly when you have the infrastructure investment bank you can have small investors in investing in this fund so let's say there is a 100 crore power plant there is a 100 crore power plant this was set up by a firm called as ABC firm after the establishment of this 100 crore, 100 crore power plant the ABC firm needed some money so what it will do is of the 100 crores it will try to sell 50% that is the power plant is costing 100 crores 
so it is planning to sell 50% of the power plant so what is the 50% of the 100 crores it will be 50 crores so this 50 crores will be taken by the from the public through an initial public offering and you know that one unit is 10 lakh rupees so for getting 50 crores this firm will make this 50 crores as 500 units so 500 units will be sold to the public with one unit costing 10 lakhs so the public can buy these units so if the public can buy these units once they bought it they will have a share in the power plant and when they have a share in the power plant they would get the share in the profits as well so let's assume that there is person a person a who has bought a share by the initial public offering so once he has bought a share he will be given some dividends which are profits the power plant will earn so this is the objective of setting up of the infrastructure investment trust and what is the india's first ever invit the first ever invit is the power grid invit so what is the power grid invit it is a infrastructure investment trust set up by the power grid company power grid company is a publicly owned company that is it is a public sector company and this comes under the ministry of power so the first ever invit is brought in the india by a, by a public sector company which is being administered by the ministry of power this is with respect to the invits and you should also note that the invits are regulated are regulated by the sebi so what the sebi stands for sebi stands for securities and exchange board of india this regulates the infrastructure investment trust and you also have seen that the minimum investment is 10 lakh rupees so generally people who have high net worth and investors will invest in this kind of infrastructure investment trust because 10 lakhs is not a small amount next we have an article dealing with the antimicrobial resistance so what is the antimicrobial resistance it is the term used to describe a phenomenon where the viruses the bacteria the fungi and other parasites which used to be treatable by medicines which used to be treatable by medicines would no longer would no longer respond to these medicines respond to them so let's say there is a viral disease there is a viral disease or a viral infection let's assume that this infection is caused by a virus called abc this is a virus name and this viral infection and this virus abc used to be treatable by a by a drug called as xyz so let's assume that this xyz drug is used earlier to treat the abc virus infection but later on this abc virus will stop responding to this drug so what will happen is once it is not responding to the drug it will lead to worsening of a situation so when you have a disease and if this disease is not being not being cured or not being responded by the drugs we are giving then it will be difficult to treat this disease this phenomenon of the parasites virus or other harmful bacteria not responding to the drugs which earlier they responded to is called as antimicrobial resistance and also in this editorial they are talking about the world health organization the world health organization is a intergovernmental organization established in the year 1948 it supports the world governments 
in matters relating to the health and it is headquartered in Geneva which is the capital of Switzerland. Next we have an article where some ethnic tribes of the country of Myanmar have started to take arms and have started to fight back against the Myanmar military. So we have seen in the earlier of this year the Myanmar military through a coup has removed the democratically elected government and it has assumed the power in the country of Myanmar and after after assuming the power of power in Myanmar this government or this military establishment has started to repress the protest which are conducted by peaceful means so the ethnic tribes in the states of Chin, Kachin and Karen have started to fight back the military and have started to take the military bases to their own control as they are using the weapons against the military establishment the military is also bombing their locations and other places so what we need to understand is the places or the regions Chin, Kachin and Karen are various territories or various states in the country of Myanmar Next we have an article where we can see that the country Singapore has sent aid to India. So we will see where the country Singapore is. Singapore is a Southeast Asian country and in the image you can see there is a small part of Singapore being neighbored to the country of Malaysia. So Singapore is a city state that is you have only one city and that city will be a sovereign country and what is the population of Singapore it is less than 60 lakhs and the capital of Singapore country is Singapore it is part of ASEAN grouping which is the association of Southeast Asian nations so this is a Southeast Asian country. It is a city state with less than 60 lakh population. Next, we have an article where Mr. Gotabaya Rajapaksa and Mr. Ibrahim Mohammed Soli have expressed solidarity with India. As the number of COVID cases and the number of COVID related deaths in the country are increasing, the president of Sri Lanka and the president of Maldives has expressed their support to the country of India. So what are these countries Sri Lanka and Maldives? They are South Asian countries. So what are the South Asian countries in the region? So we have countries such as Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka and Maldives. These are the South Asian countries and whereas even some scholars term Myanmar as also a South Asian country. It is generally seen as a link between South Asian and Southeast Asian countries. So as we are talking about the South Asian countries, we should know about an organization called SARC. So what does SARC stands for? It stands for South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. So, this is a regional, regional intergovernmental organization. Intergovernmental organization. This was established way back in the year 1985. So, in a meeting held at Dhaka, this SARC organization was established. And the secretariat, secretariat of SARC grouping is in Kathmandu which is the capital of Nepal. So the seven countries which, have, which we have seen as a South Asian countries apart from the Myanmar which we don't consider as a fully South Asian country are members of this SARC grouping and its secretariat is in Kathmandu. Also you should note that the last meeting of SARC grouping held only in the year 2014. After the 2014 year, what we witnessed is Pakistani state-sponsored terrorism. 
so due to this crew due to this reason india has stopped attending this meeting and the other countries who are members of this grouping also in solidarity of india have stopped meeting this have stopped meeting with this organizations members this is regarding the sarc grouping so we have seen here that we have maldives and sri lanka as maritime neighbors of india so we'll see the channels which are separating indian mainland or the indian islands with these countries so the island of minikoi which is part of lakshadweep islands are separated from the country maldives through a 8 degree channel so what do you mean by a channel channel is a broad waterway it is a broad waterway which separates two land masses here we can see that there is an island called minikoi and also we can see that there is island groups of maldives so these two island groups are being separated by a broad waterway and this broad waterway is termed as 8 degree channel whereas the minikoi islands and the archipelago of lakshadweep are being separated by a 9 degree channel and also as we are talking about various channels lying in the indian ocean near to the indian subcontinent we should also see the 10 degree channel so the 10 degree channel separates the andaman islands with the nicobar islands this is with respect to the 8 degree 9 degree and 10 degree channels next we have an article dealing with mr sharath kamal in this image you can see mr shamat kamal being participating in table tennis so mr sharat kamal is a professional table tennis player and he got many awards for india and as a result of it he was recently awarded the padma shri award padma shri award has been given to him next we have an article where the asian boxing confederation asian boxing confederation have moved the venue moved the venue of asian boxing championship asian boxing championship from delhi to dubai delhi to dubai the asian boxing championship is supposed to take place in the new delhi but due to increasing number of covid cases and covid deaths in the country the asian boxing federation have taken a decision to move the venue from new delhi to dubai so what is the significance of dubai dubai is a capital of uae that is the united arab emirates next we have an article talking about india australia and japan pushing for supply chain resilience so what do you mean by the term supply chain resilience in general when when you depend on one or few countries for your supply needs or for your raw materials then it might lead to excessive centralization of supply needs next we have an article dealing with the supply chain resilience initiative earlier this week the countries japan australia and india has started a new initiative called supply chain resilience initiative this is an initiative to reduce their over dependence on one country that is the country china so what is this resilience initiative project what is the purpose of this project as all the three countries we are talking about are hugely dependent on raw materials from china they are planning to reduce this dependence by diversifying their needs so let's say for production of medicines we need 100 kg of raw materials and we know that currently 
70 percent of our needs are being sourced from country China and rest 30 percent are taken from all other countries. So as we can see that there is huge dependence on China. What we are planning to do is we are planning to reduce this dependence and diversify our needs. So if we want 100 cages rather than importing 70 cages from China what we might do is we will just import 25 cages from China and import the rest from other countries. So what is the need for reducing the dependence? So the need comes from two factors. First is there might be interruption. Interruption of the supply from a country. So let's say we are importing most of our needs, most of our raw materials from China and China may be subjected to some pandemic or due to some earthquake the supply chain in the China was interrupted. So if we are hugely dependent on one country and if that country faces a problem then all the countries which are dependent on this particular country for sourcing of raw materials would also be impacted. So this is why the countries Australia, Japan and India has started this new initiative called Supply Chain Resilience Initiative. Next we have an article where it is stated that Indians that is Indian athletes might miss the World Athletics Relays. These are the qualifying matches for the participation of Olympics that will take place in Tokyo this year and due to travel restrictions that are imposed on India, no Indian flights are being allowed to various countries mainly in the Europe and North American continent and this World Athletics Relay Championship will be is scheduled to be held in Poland as we cannot we cannot go there we might be missing the participation in this championship program and as it is a qualifying match for the Tokyo Olympics if you miss this relay championships we might not be able to participate in the Olympics in this section or in this game as well and we can also see Miss Juti Chan in this photo. Next we have an article where it is stated that Miss Alfia Pathan has won the first ever Youth World Championship medal in the 81 kilo category. So we know that the World Youth Boxing Championship, Youth Boxing championship is being held in the Poland and for the first time ever an Indian has won a gold medal in the 81 cages category of boxing and this is made possible by Miss Alfia Patan you can see in this image. With this we have come to an end of the session. Inform about Adults Initiative to your other aspirants. Thank you. Adult Solutions. Add on desire.